Welcome to Tiger Talk. I'm your host, Destiny Berrios. Welcome to Tiger Talk. I'm your host, Cameron Cologne. With the recent rise in COVID cases, people across the country are shifting back into quarantine and isolation. That's right, Destiny. With quarantine and isolation, mental health becomes more of a concern. With more on how to take care of your mental health, here's Miguel Varela. Hello, SMSA. It's Miguel Varela. COVID-19 has given us many unfortunate challenges to face, but we've all had our ways to manage. While it has been a very stressful year to adapt to, the rates of anxiety and mental health challenges have increased by an average of 40%. Since we, are, since we are still in a pandemic, there are many discoveries for a healthy lifestyle and maintaining better self-care. People have found ways of self-care to unwind and relax from the hardships we face daily. Many have, many have found new hobbies to try, things to learn, and even create new routines into their life. One of the ways people do this is through exercise, which can help calm the mind. Another way is to create positive distractions that help to feel somewhat normal again. But most importantly, it's best to keep communications going with the others around. With others around. While the thing, while things may still be out of place, it's okay to feel a certain way. But it doesn't mean you can't explore healthy activities. Some mindful tips from the CDC and mental health organization have shown that there's many ways to help feel better. Among the troubles the pandemic the pandemic may bring, and to also help the mind and body maintain a healthy lifestyle with the resource with the resources around you, or the help of the internet. Thank you for listening and stay safe. Among the problems the pandemic can bring, there are also several ways to help you feel better and also to help your mind maintain a healthier lifestyle with the resources around you. Thank you for that peace and stay safe. If you need help, contact an adult you trust. A good way to maintain strong mental health is to participate in something you love, whether it's exercise or sports. Here's more with that, John Simmons. Hey, thank you. With the winter season approaching, the basketball season is going to be on its way. And if you're planning on participating in your school or local basketball team, here are some fundamentals for you to learn. Now come with me to the basketball court. Layups. When you take layups, use the backboard. Nothing else but the backboard. The backboard will help you on anything. I'm gonna show you. Backboard, same side. When you dribble, you don't want to do all. You don't want to do none of that. You want to dribble here. Maintain your dribble. Right hand. Maintain your dribble. You can add a little twist on it. For those of you pro ballers. Your own side. Top side. Spin layup. Do all that. Put it together. You get your layups. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy watching these smooth, small fundamentals in the live. I'm John Samuel from SMSA, right back to Destiny Camp. With a little practice, you can be electric, you can be as electrifying as John. The last piece that we have for you is a staff highlight. Here's an interview with Miss Monifo. Hi, my name is Maddie Lee and I'm reporting from home. This week on Tiger Talk, we decided to do a feature profile on an SMSA staff member. As an English teacher in our middle school, Miss Monifo is a new member of our SMSA family. Hi, Ms. Monofo. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. How are you? Oh, doing well, thank you. Um, so you came to us from Fox Middle School, right? Um, how difficult was it to transfer to SMSA? So I was really excited to transfer to SMSA. I had heard such amazing things about not only the students being phenomenal, but the staff being great too. It has been hard this year transitioning um, just because it's not like a year where we can really interact with one another. And so meeting everyone has proven a little difficult. But other than that, I know that this was a really good move for me and I'm excited to join you guys. Yeah, it's great to hear. Um, yeah, I can definitely see how, you know, technology could be a barrier to really getting close to the students. But um, to kind of get to know you a little bit better, um, you're an English teacher, so I figured that we would ask you, what's like a favorite book that you read recently or just a book that you enjoy? 
Hmm. My favorite book to read and reread because of its amazing um, imagery and figurative language and just it's a beautiful book is called The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And it is an adult novel, but it's definitely appropriate for all levels of students because it deals with this magical competition between these two characters and they are competing to and create this amazing circus that goes around the world which sounds really nerdy when I'm explaining it but I promise <laughs> it's a really beautiful and well-written book that I always try to make everybody read. <laughs> no it sounds really interesting I might check it out yeah um, so um, what's something that your students would be surprised to find out about you? Maybe like a hobby or like? Um, my students are always surprised to learn that my other uh, job, what I do during the summers and do kind of on weekends and sometimes even after school, is my partner and I flip houses. And so I am capable of using all the power tools and I have all 10 of my fingers still. So even though I am definitely a nerdy English teacher. I am also quite handy and I have built many things and created many beautiful houses. Oh, wow. Do you do that just in the Connecticut area? Or? We do, um, usually in around the Hartford area, but right now we're working on something in West Haven. So, oh, so that's definitely a really unique hobby. It's really yeah, cool. it's a strange one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so to kind of, you know, wrap it up, it's been a really difficult year for everyone this year, you know, with everything going on. What's um, a piece of advice that you would give to your middle schoolers or just, you know, students in general, as must say? Um, I would definitely go along with what we've been talking about this week in my advisory that the first step to being successful is just actually showing up. Um, a lot of kids feel like they can't necessarily do this hybrid schooling. It's hard for them. They don't like the computer part. But once they are actually showing up every day, they're joining their meets, they're trying stuff, they're finding that they actually are very successful. And even though it's weird at first, and even though it's different, um, they're very capable of a adapting and being successful this year, even as weird as it is. That's a really great piece of advice. I hope that um, it really reaches some of our viewers. Um, thank you so much for giving us some time today. You know, we're really happy to have uh, you here at SMSA as a part of our community. <laughs> well, happy to welcome Ms. Monofold to the SMSA community. That's all we have this week, folks. I'm Destiny Berrios. And I'm Karan Cologne. Have a great weekend.